My guest this week is State Representative Andrew Manus, a dairy Republican who announced this week that after one term, he's basically had enough. Andrew, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, So James. two years leaving the State House, you, met, met a, you left a pretty big mark, but why are you not going to run again? Well, I have a new child in my family. He's uh, two months old now. He's doing great, but uh, you know, it's time to focus on family and finances for a little while, and then I'll get back into the game later on. Mm -hmm. And during your two years, like I said, you were one of the more uh, active state representatives of all the 400. What are you most proud of? I'm most proud of passing uh, HB 1297, which is a bill prohibiting the implementation of a state health insurance exchange under the Obamacare Act. And what that's going to do essentially is put some pressure on the federal government to come in and uh, basically they're, they're going to have to, uh, we're forcing their hand and they're going to have to uh, make a move now. Hopefully we're going to get them to amend or repeal uh, Obamacare because they were counting on states to create these exchanges. Since we're not doing it, I think we're forcing their hand a little bit. Also, I want to ask you, you are one of the biggest supporters in the state of Ron Paul. I was. Uh, 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 Mitt Romney now looks like he's got his delegate count. Uh, are you going to support Mitt Romney? Are you uh, going to hold out for Ron Paul? What do you, what do you think? Well, uh, I think we need to get Obama out of office, so I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, the other thing that I really wanted to touch on was my smart meter bill. Mm -hmm. This is a bill that allows people to opt in to smart meter gateway devices, which essentially are these little uh, control p panels that go onto the smart meters on your home. They can read and control the usage of your in appliances inside your home, such as your refrigerator, your air conditioner, your washer and dryer. So for people who think that's kind of creepy, they now don't have to do that, and um, this law requires people to opt in to have one of those things put on their home. And uh, I think it's a really great privacy rights bill, um, and that's now law, so people can, that's the requirement today. Well, congratulations. Obviously, that's something that's going to touch a lot of people's lives. It will, um, particularly with the co-op putting smart meters in right now. Well, thanks so much. And you can read more about the State House and a number of the November races at WMURpoliticalscoop.com. And that's also where you can watch an extended version of this interview. But that does it here for TV. Now back to you. I got to wonder, Andrew, now that we have a little bit more time, the, how do you feel about this, the way this system is set up in terms of the State House? I mean, here you are, hardworking, very passionate about particularly some liberty issues. Uh, can anyone serve in this state house who's under 50 and not independently wealthy? It's a really difficult thing to, to do, but you know what I really like about th the volunteer legislature okay. that we have is you can get in there for one term and you know maybe unplug a little bit and, and make sure that you're grounded in the reasons that you ran for office to begin with and you don't get corrupted by the system. If you're going in there term after term after term after term, you're going to get corrupted by the system. You'll be get friendly with the executive department officials, and all of a sudden you're not representing the people anymore. You're doing the bidding of the executive branch of government. And to me, that's one of the biggest problems this faces, uh, this state is facing right now. One of the reasons, you know, besides family and finances, which are definitely the reasons, but uh, one of the side effects of this is I get to step back, ground myself in, in regular citizen life again. And then when I have an opportunity, get back into it and still have that grounding in, um, you know, family but and, is there and liberty. But that could be changed in the system to make it more accessible? Maybe get rid of the second year? We didn't, we didn't have that for a I while. I think that that would help a lot if we got rid of biennium, so biennial sessions. You know, I was against it for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I thought that two years was good because we needed a legislature to be a check on the other two branches of government. And I still think that. But we can still, you know, as long as we don't, get, you know, leave for good after the first year, we can come back for issues that are facing the state, then I think it's okay to have a, a one-year session followed by another year where we're only coming in for emergencies. I think that would do a lot of good. You're going to stay involved, of course, in Republican politics. I think you and your wife are both uh, running for delegate to the state convention. Uh, what is the state of the New Hampshire Republican Party right now? Well, I think that Republicans, as long as they focus on limited government, individual liberty, personal responsibility, 
in free enterprise are going to be a very strong party. And I think all of the representatives and senators and the governor, if they can stay focused on those issues and not worry about the singular issue differences between Republicans, I think that will be a very strong party in New Hampshire going forward. Good. Well, thank you for coming in. Of course, Derry, one of my favorite facts. More people live in Derry than all of Coas County. Is that right? Now it's uh, such a growing area. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, James. And thank you for watching WMURpoliticalscoop.com.